it's been a, uh, a long winding unorthodox journey. Um, well, we, you know, I got out of school. Um, we, uh, in back house, we developed my first play, which was called uh, Hello Herman. It was about uh, high school violence at the time. It's kind of a response to the Columbine massacre and put that up and, you know, as they say, we were developing in the Heights and a few other shows with some great playwrights. And uh, then at a certain point I got, um, I got a, a, nice, a nice piece of press came out and I thought, you know, I haven't really been focused on, on acting enough. I want to go to LA and I want to take this opportunity to go out there and, and, you know, give it a shot and see. So drove across the country, uh, almost died on the way. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Car was spinning around on I-78 out of Jersey. And um, if anyone had been with me, they would have said, take my ass home now, please. But I happened to be alone. So did the rest of the 3,000 miles and uh, moved out there. And it was actually, it was going uh, uh, pretty well. I was kind of living that, that young actor dream out there, the, the choice auditions, and you know, really feeling like the momentum was there. And then uh, my mom's cancer came back kind of with a vengeance. She had been in remission for, for almost three years at that point, but uh, was, was dealing with some stress and it, um, it just really you know, came back in a, in a vicious, terrifying way. So at that point I was looking for any way to get back to New York and um, Richard Stratton uh, was, taking over as editor-in-chief of High Times Magazine. Uh, and he uh, offered me the job of being his, his number two. So, uh, you know, I'd done like a few freelance pieces, um, was always fascinated by journalism, but hadn't really, you know, didn't know that world, but had a lot of ideas for what we could do with, with High Times and kind of, you know, re-envisioning re it to be more of what it was in the 70s when it started. So I came back to New York and essentially, you know, gave, gave up on the idea of acting at that point and just learned the magazine industry up and down at a time when it was just beginning to transition to, to online. It was really like almost this last gasp when print was more powerful than websites. Um, and kind of, I mean, almost in that year, this was 2004, I like almost really saw that shift happen. I mean, in, in that year, we doubled our uh, unique visitors per month, but we had to take a hit on ad sales in the print magazine. And so they, they, they were not happy with us, even though we were saying, look, this is, this is where it's going. Uh, and then I uh, kind of stayed in that, in that magazine world for a bit, started doing a little producing um, of like PSAs and, and things like that. Uh, and then uh, moveon.org uh, was doing a, um, a PSA that they asked myself and uh, my colleague David Ambrose to uh, to produce about bringing the, the the troops home from the Iraq War, and I had uh, you know I was I was continuing to write throughout all of this, writing screenplays, writing treatments, pitches, um, and uh, you know was 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 having some some success with that. Mike Nichols became a champion of. Uh, a script uh, line called Blind that I wrote back then, which I'm sure we'll get into later. But um, but Oliver Stone got his hands on um, a Hurricane uh, Katrina uh, treatment that I'd written and wanted to meet. So simultaneously, while I was, I was asked to produce this PSA about bringing the troops home from Iraq, I was going to go meet with Oliver Stone in LA, and they said, you know, is there is there a director that you think might do this? I thought, well. Maybe these worlds are colliding for a reason. Um, and went out there and met with Oliver and had the like extreme joy of uh, getting to, to talk to him as a screenwriter. And then the extreme uh, anxiety producing, nervous making, gut wrenching experience of being a producer for Oliver. And uh, we made this commercial and, you know, through the course of it, got to know each other a little bit. And at a certain point he, uh, at a certain point, he looked at me and goes, yeah, yeah. I said, well, wow, that's, that's incredible, Oliver. I, I usually get Jason Priestley. You know, I'll, I'll, t I'll take Russell Crowe. That's, that's great. He goes, yeah, you can be my Russell Crowe. So um, suddenly acting was a, a possibility again. And I auditioned, as, as my dad was actually on his like deathbed, I was flying back and forth to LA to audition for um, a, a Vietnam movie. The, the, that Oliver was going to do 
and uh, actually w was cast in like a, a decent role in that. And I did, uh, I did get to tell my dad before he died, hey, you know, Pop Oliver cast me in this thing. It's, you know, it's like seven auditions, but <laughs> I'm in and it's, you know, it's all gonna be okay. So that was, that was kind of a, a very joyous moment before uh, the end there. And, um, and then literally uh, my father died. We had the funeral and I had to fly out to LA to start rehearsals and, you know, to b begin this process the next day. And I, I thought, well, you know, there, there's no good way to get down with the death of one, one's parent, you know? So there, there's nothing right you can do. There's nothing wrong you can do. Just, just keep living. That's all, that's all you can do. So I go out there and it was, you know, such a surreal experience being at this table and kind of everything as an actor I, I had always dreamed and, and wanted to do. And, uh, and then by the end of that week, suddenly the movie was postponed indefinitely. And I got a call from Oliver and he said, uh, hey man, I've had a bad week. You've had a really bad week. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next week. Um, so I went back to New York and kind of got into bed for three weeks and tried to figure out what I was going to do next. But, um, but, you know, what was kind of really beautiful about it is Oliver didn't forget about me uh, as an actor. And he offered me, you know, a small part in um, his movie W and then when he did Wall Street 2, uh, again, it was you know, a brutal auditioning process, like you know, five, six, seven callbacks and having to get studio approval and things like that. But finally I got that kind of that, that, that dream role in Wall Street 2, uh, Money Never Sleeps. And, um, and that was like going to work in your fantasy every day. I mean, it was just the, the, the people I got to, the, the privilege of working with, getting to know or, or friends with to this day. I, I'm forever indebted to, to Oliver Stone, that's for sure. Uh, from there, uh, I continued, you know, writing, producing, and uh, finally, after about 12 years, I think it was, uh, the movie that Mike Nichols had become a champion of, uh, Blind, finally got made. And um, we did that with uh, Alec Baldwin, Demi Moore, my brother Michael was the director, and uh, the producer was Jennifer Gelfer and, uh, and Martin Tuckman. And uh, it was on that production that I met them and, and we kind of formed like a, an immediate bond and discussed, you know, what is it we want to do? And ultimately came together to form Mailer Tuckman Media, uh, where I find myself today. And um, another, another bit that I, I is perhaps my favorite part about Blind is I met my wife. On that, I, I didn't know it at the time. It would be, you know, years later. But um, but she was working on that, and we met, and she came and worked on the next movie I did, and um, then suddenly we we found ourselves both single. And so, wait, is this is this real? And uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't be a more happily married buffalo. So it was, and and now she's starring in our latest movie, Diary. So obviously, there's you know when, when you say. How do you get from A to, to Q? Uh, there's a lot that is skipped in the middle, but it's uh, this, this is this is what pops off the top of my head.